Uh, let's pretend that all of we this is being recorded person. anyway. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Start, let's start it up. Let's do it. Okay. Again. Okay, someone someone do like a countdown. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the analysis paralysis. It's got us. <laughs> yeah. Suze, do a countdown. Yeah. Three, two, one. Hello, Internet, and welcome to Games on the Rocks with the Meeples included. Grab a Meeple pillow and a cocktail and come join us while we talk about games and hot topics in the gaming industry. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, Meeples included is a website and community where we have a mindfulness for inclusivity and diversity, and we just focus on tabletop games and gaming in general and having fun. So uh, we're glad you're here, and definitely check out the chat. Uh, we're going to be watching that and interacting with you. If you have any questions or things that you want to talk about, then feel free to type that in there. Um, so we'll start off just introducing everybody. I am Stephanie Straw. I'm at Insert Straw here on the Twitters. That is where you can find me abundantly forcing my opinions on the Internet. And we also have Suzanne Sheldon. Suzanne, Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Tell, tell the Internet a little bit about yourself. Uh, I am on the internets on the Twitters with Stephanie. My handle is at 425Suzanne. If you think Stephanie's abundant, then I am positively... I, I, I am excessive. So. Your bio does Lord. say I tweet a lot. Your Twitter bio is like it says I tweet a lot. So. I try to be transparent. Yeah. And over here we have Nicole Hoy. Hi. I have reasons pretty much everywhere. My dog Jake. Uh, <laughs> He needs in on the action, obviously. Um, yeah, you can find me on GG, on Twitter, on Instagram, as I have museums. And we have Marguerite Cottrell. Say hello to the internet. Hey, internet. I am Marguerite Cottrell. I go by MaggieBot on the Twitter and the BGG and the Facebook. And now on Patreon. Just saying. Um, but oh, I, check that out. What's that link? <laughs> Patreon.com slash MaggieBot, of course. It helped pay for this lovely mic that you're using right now. It did, this honking piece of loveliness. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Gracious <laughs> happening. Gracious! It's just as well it's not a family show, I mean. Come on. <laughs> well, good thing it's not. Um, but uh, I, I don't think I tweet quite as much as y'all, but I go on sprees. I do the, I do the, the chat spree. Tweet sprees, for sure. Tweet sprees. Um, so this is a new show that we're starting, and it's basically just going to be the four of us, maybe some other guests, maybe some other people, um, just hanging out, talking about games, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 p.m. Central for those that are in my column of the U.S. Um, so we have this thing that we made up when we're all talking about things we want to do for the show, and um, we want the show focused to be on games, but we also want it to be a really loose atmosphere, so hence the little cocktails. And we all came up with uh, a signature cocktail per episode. This cocktail is the Analysis Paralysis. It is two ounces each of vodka, Kahlua, and tonic water, and then you let it sit for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's so warm. You're going to wonder, like, am I going to sip it? Yeah, until the ice burn. melts. I don't know if you can see. I have one tiny little piece of ice left. <laughs> so my analysis paralysis is perfect. That's how it's done. That's how it's done. <laughs> so what's everyone else drinking? Yeah, Cider. Well, let me ask you this. Is, is the, the key to the analysis paralysis... The thoughtfulness, the strategic pacing, and the status of the ice, or is it really that that vodka Kahlua tonic mix? Because it's taken too damn long, is what it is. <laughs> okay, so so then there you go. So I have a lovely raspberry limeade and vodka because what? I didn't have any Kahlua, and I thought um, this would this would do the job. That's the counter to the analysis paralysis. That's the person at the table that's like, let's yeah, come on, let's go. I, I, I accept that title. I'm good. I'm good with that. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm middle like ground because I have a cider. Uh, I did open a can and pour it into a glass, though. 
right? I went one step so, beyond just right. opening the can. I'm in the middle yeah. of it, you know. <laughs> so fancy. I like it. Mags, what are you drinking? Well, in honor of doing my first show with Stephanie, I had to bring pink champagne. Yeah. <laughs> well done. There's nothing more appropriate than pink champagne. I <laughs> love that glass too. That's great. We need um we need really good pink champagne drink ideas. So if you're in the chat, send us your drink recipe ideas and fun game themed drinks, and maybe one with pink champagne would be bonus points. Yes, bonus points for anything pink champagne. So is there anything topical that we want to talk about? Anything that just really interests someone, and we can just say. Well, let's talk about Geekway a little bit. You were just there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I went to Geekway last weekend. It's in St. Louis. This is the fourth year, maybe, for Geekway. Um, I know that it hasn't been around for a really long time. Um, there were 1,800 people there. They're hoping to increase that to 2,500. Uh, nice. It's called Geekway to the West because that's like the St. Louis is the city to the west and the arches and all that stuff. So, But a lot of people think, oh, that's in California. No, it's in St. Louis. <laughs> Um, and it was really great. It was I call it BGG Light because it had that same vibe as Board Game Geek Con in that the focus is on playing games. They have vendors there. They have a games library. They have events. Um, I don't know if they had any panels. I didn't see that on there. Um, they have this really cool thing called Fancy Gaming on Saturday where everyone dresses up in their best. One I of the organizers. Pictures. Yes, Chris Darden, one of the organizers, was wearing his Pac-Man suit, and his wife Kristen was wearing a lovely dress. So they nice. dressed up in their top hats into the nines and just played, you know, probably Rhino Hero or something. I don't know, whatever <laughs> they wanted to. <laughs> so that was Amazing. really cool. But I, I really just played games the whole time. Um, they have a, a really big play to win area, and I think they're actually one of the ones that kind of started that and now have kind of crept into Gen Con and some other cons with that. Um, so you take a game and you play it, and then you're entered in for a chance to win it. And I think that that's a really good way to get people um, playing games, demoing games, encouraging them to check out the games. Um, cons are the best place to learn games, right? I mean... You don't have to read the rules. There might be multiple people that can help you out. Um, Nicholas Co., uh, one of the Meeple's included contributors, uh, they were there also, and they helped teach me Burano along with Daryl Andrews of Meeple Syrup. So, so that's a question I have for the group. Um, so there's, it, in my opinion, a lot of games fall into this category of, oh, I played it at a con, it was great. And I tend to think that some games become kind of convention games, where if you take them out of that environment, they're not actually as good as you think they were. Because That's great. Because they're like, wrapped up in that social, lovely bubble that you were in. Lift It might be kind of that way. Um, <laughs> Castle Crush. No, I think those are good games. But, I mean, I'm just... I'm, Eric and I probably aren't going to break out Lift It together. You know what I mean? But like, we'll play it at a convention. People were super psyched about Happy Salmon coming out, and I felt like that was probably falling into that for me where it was probably really fun because you played it with your, like, goofy friends from the Internet, but right. maybe not for, like, a Saturday night. Yeah. I feel like um, uh, Time's Up is a really big con game for me. Um, I, very, I very rarely play it uh, at home, like, maybe once a year at home, but um, during cons, like, two or three times during a con, depending on how long the con is, uh, I'll get Time's Up out and... It's just, it's a great, like, late night. You're feeling tired, but you just want to push through and hang out with people. Um, that, that is so much fun. I really love that. Don't you think it kind of depends on, like, what type of game you are? I think it's, it's super true, probably, for, for the people on, on this chat, because we're all pretty avid gamers, and we like... A lot of strate strategic games. I was honestly going to say strategic <laughs> games. <laughs> that's, that's all I've had. You said that's it. You literally said it. It's like wizardry, yeah. but oh no, my goodness. We need a we need a strategic drink for sure. Oh, <laughs> next week. Next week, boom, done. We found it. <laughs> um, oh, it's gonna have float, and it's gonna have like different layers. And then a little umbrella. I love it. Yes, I love it. We'll have to ask. Um, uh, Rich Summer, if he'll design a, a drink for us. <laughs> um, 
Anyway, because we weren't just strategic games and things like that, and I think you're right. Like there are those times when you're really tired, or you're with these people that you don't get to see very often, and there's a mood and there's an atmosphere. But like when I think about like you talk about Happy Salmon, you talk about Lift Up, you talk about Times Up, and Times Up is really the one that that made me think about this. Like I know people who at work, like we have some board games at work, and they're all like. They're all like party games. They're all, you know, um, say anything and things like that. And that's what they want to play, yeah. you know. So I think it's a little relative there. But certainly for this group, I get that. I mean, at the same time, you could also argue games like uh, Mega Civ. Yes. You know, would also. Yeah, Ending Mocker as well. Like, I see that being played. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be pretty rare. Um, yeah. We played Times Up a lot here, but kind of once you've played it with your friends, you get these like people that can kind of work together because yeah. it's a trivia charades type of game. So at a convention, you get new personalities and new people, and everyone's kind of on an equal playing field yeah. usually because no one like intimately knows and can just really necessarily connect with someone. So plus, it's a riot and ridiculous just to watch people like make obscene gestures without any noise. <laughs> It's hard, that last round. It's so hard. Yeah, right. It's definitely one of those ones that you have to have in your in a convention library, though. Like, a lot of dexterity games, a yeah. lot of, um, like, dancing eggs and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I just don't know that I'm going to be like, let's break out dancing eggs. I mean, I might, but I'm not going to on the regular. Like, I'm not going to have a Friday dancing eggs night, although now that I say it, that sounds kind of fun. <laughs> but... <I> mean... <laughs> Um, there was a con that I was at recently, and it's a 10-day con, so it's it's long. People bring a lot of games, like it's a attendee sourced library. And that first weekend I was there, nobody had brought Times Up, nobody, not even R and R games, because <laughs> they thought they thought someone else was going to. So they like, had, someone will bring it. They had copies of. It was like a new um, anniversary expansion, so it's like a little box. So we basically played through that box as Time's Up, and it was great. Like, there were lots of Games of Thrones uh, cards and Adventure Time references and stuff, but it was just so funny to me that, <laughs> that nobody had thought to bring Time's Up. I think during BGGCon, one of my favorite memories this last year was three different groups got me to play Walk the Dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so good. That had the little plastic dogs, right? Right, and it's oh just like, God, I game. saw you guys playing that. Yeah. You, you just kind of line up a bunch of dogs and you play a couple cards and you're trying to get sets of dogs. It was the cutest game. I yeah. could never imagine playing that on the regular but for a con, to play that with like Paul Dean and friends of mine that I hadn't seen in a really long time was so yeah. much fun. It was a really nice like ease into learning the gallerist. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but I, I find that as well, like con games can also be ones that are like not in people's libraries or hard to find. Like Walk the Dogs, I think, is like some it's an educational publisher. So nobody's gonna walk into like their friendly local game store and pick up Walk the Dogs. So the only place you're gonna get to play that and Alan Moon co design is at BGG Con. Like it's just <laughs> It's so amazing to me that, that con libraries can have those little gems. I like Master it, Thieves, uh, the wooden box thing, the things, and you turn it, and like no, nobody owns that. Like that's some kind of that weird cool. artifact. Yeah, I actually haven't seen that anywhere outside of BGG Con. And the Walk the Dogs game, if that didn't have those derpy plastic dog figures, that so game good. would that game would not be as if it was just cards. Cute, oh, still. Yeah, absolutely. Those little <laughs> centipede-like <laughs> dog lines. <laughs> so weird, but so yeah. cute. <laughs> <laughs> that Master of Thieves game, though, because you like you put diamonds in boxes, and then you like you open up drawers, and you're looking through them, trying to find little gems, and put them on these little you know pillows, and yeah. it's so cool. I, we priced it while people were playing it. It was like two, three hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it looks handmade. I know it's not because it's like it's a Zoc game, I think. Um, so I don't think it's handmade, but like it feels very unique. 
Um, and it was very intriguing to watch people play that at BGGCon for sure. But then, like, I think stuff like code names, um, like that, played a ridiculous amount. And at BGGCon, at least, um, Star Wars Risk was out constantly. Code uh, names. Code names is a Dr. Seuss game in that you can play it in a box. You can play it with a fox. <laughs> you can play it with chicken pox. <laughs> I really hope you've told Check Games that line. Oh, oh, no, okay. I just made it up. This you, is you, missed, you missed the most important part where you could play it at Mox. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So and and then we quickly go, oh, Mox Boarding House is a friendly local game. <laughs> <laughs> Marketing. Yes. <laughs> On brand. Just for yeah, you. yeah. I just, I need that, like, really quick little fine yeah, print. Yeah, that's so what just across the bottom. <laughs> like, the MSRP. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I've been to BGGCon, and from looking at pictures of Geekway, it looked like uh, they had done something similar, because one of the fun things about BGG, right, is that out in this main hallway, um, there's all those dexterity, all those, like, yes. really elaborate, like, silly games that you were kind of talking about. Like, you normally would probably never play them, but they're perfect when you need a break from the convention, or, like, like at, say... 11 a.m. on Saturday, it's empty out there. But then at 3 a.m. on Saturday night, yeah. it's packed, right? Because yes. everybody's tired and a little tipsy <laughs> or whatever. So it looked like Geekway was trying to create a similar thing. I saw, like, a right. lot of dexterity games. But then, like, I go to Dice Tower Con, too, and they don't have the same setup. Like, they may have those games, but they're tucked away in the library. Um, they're just not kind of set out, always available for a quick pick up and play. Um, have, for other conventions that you guys have gone to, like the Gathering or um, some of the other bigger conventions, do, what kind of setups do they have for those kinds of games? For the Gathering, there's really not a lot of stuff that is set up constantly, except for prototypes. Um, so, like, CG um, had a couple of prototypes that were set up to play uh, almost constantly. Um, and there was a weird game that Friedman had. It was like a, a tree with little apples, and you would, like, bang at it with, like, a leaf on a stick. And that was just, like, sitting out constantly as well. But, like, most of the time, it is just, like, you grab a game. Like, it doesn't really have a setup area for anything. I, yeah, I think it's those games are dependent on table presence. Like, you know, like the Master Thief game or whatever, people are like, what game is that? Because it's yeah. just like, what is that? And I remember, <laughs> um, you know, Cash and Guns was like that whenever we first saw it, because it's like, why are people pointing guns <laughs> at each other? <laughs> so, you know, those games that have that, that noticeable table presence are kind of the ones that will just sort of circulate. So even if you took out, like, hamster roll, then that would kind of, you know, circulate around. Um, yeah. We have an audience question, real quick. Oh, yeah. uh, Meeple Mountain has joined us, Andy Matthews, and uh, he wants to know, we probably should have brought this up in the show, but he knew that Nicole's in Canada and said that he thought we were all kind of pretty close geographically. Common I misconception, wish. I don't live in Seattle. No, you should. <laughs> you should. I, would, I wish I did, but Suze and Maggie Bot both live in Seattle. Um, and then he also had a question about code names and the Spiel des Jahres, and I wanted to get each of your thoughts on that and maybe the other SDJ nominees. Yeah, the the nominees are great this year. Like, uh, I I generally haven't ever played the Kinderspiel ones, but yeah. usually each year there's like a bunch of the Kenner and the Main that I haven't played. This year, um, Imhotep is the only one out of the two main um, categories that I haven't played. Um, so I was like stoked to see that because I can actually make kind of an informed choice on <laughs> who I think might win. So uh, I would really like to see Isle of Sky win. That'd be really awesome. I really Predi like that game. Pr predictions right now. What do you think is gonna win? Well, Isle of Sky is for the Kenner Spiel, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I'm saying code names and Pandemic Legacy are my. I I do think that. Yeah. Pandemic Legacy just was such a thing. It's so hard to beat. 
It was pervasive in so much beyond uh, the like board game tight knit industry. It was it just went be it was like on NPR. I mean, come on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And I mean, everyone that has played it, it had a really nice story arc, and it had some cool surprises, and it, if they're playing it in that room, like, you know, because the, the voting for Kennerspiel and for the Spiel are, like, people gather and they kind of play the games over a couple of days, I would be very surprised if those types of stories and that type of narrative doesn't sell that game into a, a win. Yeah, if, why, they, if they, like, weren't still thinking about it, yeah. Right. Yeah, it would be really tough. To beat that out. I mean, Isle of Sky is a really solid game. Oh yeah. Um, and Time Stories as well. Like Time Stories is so fantastic and, and it's much more divisive though. It is. It is really. Yeah. And I think um, Isle of Sky flew under the radar for a lot of people, um, which is why I was kind of surprised to actually see it on the Kennerspiel list. I like I'm very pleased, but for some reason I just don't think it it got hype. Um, but Pandemic Legacy is gonna be really hard to beat. And as much as I like really had a great time playing Karuba. I think Codenames just has that momentum that is going to be really hard. That so. Dr. Seuss momentum? <laughs> yeah, girl! <laughs> <laughs> Just the box. Okay, so Max, Max says Codenames and Pandemic Legacy for sure, which I agree with also. I think my first Stone Age or Stone Age Junior, but I honestly haven't played M or Leo, so I don't yeah, know. I not play any of them. Yeah, I haven't um, played them. Yeah, Suze, what do you think? Code names, pandemic legacy. Time yeah, stories? I just think I think time stories is too divisive. I personally love Isle of Sky, um, and I actually haven't played Pandemic Legacy, but just everything you hear about it, I think it's it's kind of the front runner. Yeah. I mean, I think sometimes the spiel surprises you, right? Every once in a while, so maybe Karuba has a chance. Anybody who knows me knows I'm a huge Karuba fan. I love that flipping game yeah. so darn much. So, <laughs> I, and don't get me wrong, I love Codenames too. I've played so much Codenames, but um, I think like my underdog soul kind of is rooting for Karuba. You, and, you the know, Karuba <laughs> Isle of Sky win would be... I think that's Woo! a phenomenal combo. <laughs> Although, <laughs> Woo! Woo! Yeah, raspberry lemonade. Oh, thank you. But I raised my glass to that girl. <laughs> if that I want to really ask happens. you guys. I have a question I want to ask. Yeah. Wait, I want to hear. I want to hear your predictions too. But I also want us to talk about then. Um, the Kenner Spiel noms because Stephanie, you're so cute. Um, because a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people complain about what they view as like a downgrading of complexity in the Kenner Spiel noms. So I want to hear your opinions on that too. But first, I want to hear your other what your picks are. You want to hear what my picks are? Well, because we didn't hear yours, right? Oh, code names, pandemic legacy. And I think my first Stone Age or Stone Age Junior, whatever. It's, I've seen it called both, so I don't know what the official name is. Mags, is it officially my first Stone Age? Well, it says on our box, but... Right. In, in the States, at least with the license into the States, it was my first Stone Age, which I think is a better branding, so I don't know. The German a, translation might be like Stone Age Junior or something like that, maybe. Because there's a Hava line of games that are called My Very First Games. Yes. And I yes. thought that it was a nice, like kind of tie into that without literally yeah. stealing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, well what's the Carcassonne? What's the junior? So Yeah, yeah. Carcassonne is what was it? Uh my first kids. Carcassonne, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Kids of Carcassonne, yeah. Oh, they well they changed it. They went from the Kids of Car Carcassonne to My First Carcassonne. Right. Oh, okay. After Haba did their My First stuff. Mm hmm. Oh, oh, paving the way. Yellow brick damn. road, baby. Oh, oh yellow yeah. box road, am I right? <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> yeah, those are my predictions. I actually wanted to play Imhotep, um, and I asked Nicholas to bring it to Geekway, but we didn't get to play it. Um, they ended up playing with their friend I that was there. Um, it was absolutely lovely meeting her, by the way. Um, but yeah, I, I really wanted mean. to play it. Like mean? Really mean? Yeah, I heard it's really mean. Like, does it just punch it's you in like, the face? It's like there's a lot of take that in it. Apparently. Oh man, I'm like it already. With that. Yeah, I would have yeah. been. I wouldn't have wanted to do take that with Nicholas though. I would have been like. <laughs> Nicholas is too sweet. I, I know. It'd have been like it's fun to play competitive games with Nicholas. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, yeah, they would. They would have been fine. They would have been fine. But I would have been like, 
I have to. <laughs> well, they pushed up. Got me Arkwright, and it was like incredible just to watch them build the engine. And I'm sitting there just floundering. Yeah, <laughs> but it's really good. Yeah. They pushed up the U.S. release for Emotep, right? Now they, that it got the yeah. spiel, that's yeah, the one they pushed up, so it's going to be available. Uh, Origins? Like, I think already Pretty soon. Uh, not Origins. That's like mid June. Maybe. Yeah. No. 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 Like I think that they pushed it up by like a month. Okay. So yeah. Uh, it, pre-order, I don't believe, is out. So that's usually at least going to be six weeks. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> awesome. I'm. I that looks. That one looks so good. I'm. I'm. Yeah. Probably gonna pick it up basically right away. Well, I mean, you can't really go wrong with my good mate, the Lord Harding. Like my countryman. Your your countryman. Your countryman, the Walker Harding. Canada's got it going on. Canada's got it going on. Yeah. Canada does have it going on. Is okay. So isn't it? He's Australian. He's Australian people. Come on. Oh, <laughs> I mean, that country. Okay. <laughs> sure. Pick a country, Nicole. Yeah. yeah. Like I pick a side. Yeah. <laughs> Cake I mean, you. maple well, versus Vegemite, what can I say? But again, <laughs> Toronto, it's like in, it's in the United States, basically. It's basically like, it's basically. you're kidding yourself. It's in, <laughs> it's like in Michigan, basically. And, um, and I think everybody in Toronto just, like, dropped off the watching. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All, all 20 of our Toronto viewers just left. <laughs> just gone. Yeah. It is interesting, the pockets of gaming around the world, like Germany, um, Canada, I think is really huge at gaming. I mean... Southern Ontario especially, like, there's a bunch of game designers that live yeah. around here, which is great. Like, Toronto has a, a very regular game designer night, mm -hmm. uh, two of them, in fact, at local game stores. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it's, it's great. And the, like the game Artisans of Canada group, um, yeah. is great because there's, um, there's folks in Vancouver, there's folks out in Halifax, like it oh, really wow. is kind of, like, it's, it's a roller coaster coast, coast. yeah. So uh, I have friends that have a board game cafe in Even Halifax. in the Northern Territories. Exactly. <laughs> up in the top of the Yukon. <laughs> Um, but they have a game designers night out in Halifax once a month as well. So it's like it's a big thing. It's awesome. And in so. the U.S., there's like Seattle's huge. Um, Dallas, I think, is big. Mm, and then yeah. I, think, I think Indy because of Gen Con. And then I think North Carolina. But it's so it's interesting how that influences things because the PAXs in those areas are like heavily board game. You know, like yeah. PAX South is super board game. Yeah. Super board game. I think even more board game than PAX Prime just because PAX Prime, like, that area has all that video game stuff too. So that's yeah. a big deal. And, like, I can't think of a big video game company that's in Dallas. But there there are, but they're in Austin and Houston too. Like, yeah. They're, yeah. they're more spread out, whereas here they're super duper concentrated into two cities. Yeah, you're right. Austin, yeah, I think there, I think there are some in Austin and stuff. But, um... Yeah, it's, it's interesting how that influences, because, like, PAX East, I feel like, was pretty light. I mean, there was a decent board game presence there, but it was pretty... It was, it was all about those vid games. Well, and you have well, I think places it, like Wisconsin, and you have, um, in our chat, Columbia, Ohio. Columbus, yes. Ohio. Yeah. Um, I, I think there are lots of pockets of gaming also in the Midwest, but we're more populated than places like Canada. Like, Canada's a huge amount of landmass, but the population is very centralized to a few different spots. Yeah, that's why Southern Ontario is, like, it is very highly populated here. Um, so, like, here, Montreal and Vancouver are probably the bigger cities. Um, and around Toronto, the greater Toronto area and Southern Ontario, there's definitely, like, a big grouping of board game cafes and board game designers. So neat to live near so much gaming. I We're really lucky out here in Seattle, so we just have like gamers and game designers and you know publishing houses and stuff everywhere here, so you really get to meet a lot of the community in your backyard. It's just really nice. It's a big benefit of living here. Yeah. You got all that nice weather and stuff too. For, the, for, those, for those just joining us, uh, grab a drink. We all have a drink. Grab a meeple pillow, hug a meeple pillow. Uh, <laughs> our drink of the evening, just to repeat, is the analysis paralysis. 
That is two ounces each of vodka, Kahlua, tonic water, and a couple of cubes of ice. Then let it sit for an hour until the ice. <laughs> It's going to be funny every time. <laughs> I know. I just, I'm going to say it. I'll just say it like every two minutes. I still maintain that the analysis paralysis should just be a glass with ice <laughs> slowly melting while you try and figure out. But then we, I, then we would be games, games H2O instead of games <laughs> on the rocks. So yeah, be, we got to have the booze there. That would be a good show, but a different show. <laughs> it would be very different. Okay. Um, so, so we've we've talked about um, STG, yeah, uh, and we've talked a little bit about Geekway. What about upcoming stuff that y'all are going to? Because I know Origins is really soon. Uh, What's or, Origins? Or not going to, in the case of Sue's, perhaps. <laughs> Sue's goes to. I think the main con you'll see her at is Gen Con. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> she's definitely there. She's everywhere. Like 2D, I think, just definitely 2D. <laughs> flat yeah. suits. Yeah, it's flat always suits. Oh my uh, gosh, that's so <laughs> funny. Patrick yeah, Carter. so who who all is going to Origins? Is that the next con that everyone's going to? Mm -hmm. That's mid, yeah, mid June. I would be there. Uh, Zeus? No, no, I'm I'm no I'm, I'm never... Origins. Origins. <laughs> We're all Origins over here. <laughs> or I'm, or uh, a giant. Yeah, I'm. Uh, that I'm that in, sounds bad. In, uh, in it sounds like a juice, like a like a rotten juice or a jant. No, I guess or like a like a an unguent that you would put on a sore oh. that you can't get rid of. <laughs> Nor a jant. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a topical cream for sure. Oh, I will yeah. be at I will be at Origins and I will be working in the board game geek booth. Hey, oh, nice. Awesome. I didn't so know jealous. that. That's so cool. Yeah. That's really great. Are you going um, to stream? Are you guys going to stream? That's secret info. We are going to stream, so they don't have... <laughs> they don't... That's so secret. That's secret. <laughs> yes, we are. No, no, no. I'm saying, no, I'm saying, like, it's secret, but, like, because I haven't said anything about it until now, but I'm saying it now, and that's the benefit of watching this show, because yeah. we're going to be sipping, and we're going to be telling secrets. So. That's cool. right. Secrets on the rocks. Hashtag. <laughs> yeah, no, so um, they are trying to see if they need to have a bigger presence at Origins like they do at Gen Con with all the mm -hmm. live streaming and the interviews with the publishers and stuff. Um, we have a schedule filled out pretty heartily, but Origins is spread out over more days than Gen Con, and it's not as big as, not as, like, publisher-heavy as Gen Con, so um, we actually might end up doing some live plays and stuff like that uh, at Origin, so we'll be playing games live, and that will be on the Board Game Geek uh, YouTubes. That'd be so. super fun. I'm so excited. That's, like, literally, like, we went to Gen Con last year, I think, or what was the last, the first time you did this trip with? Yeah. BGG. So I yeah. watched the entire time. It was so fun. I, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to be on the back end of it and hopefully learn more stuff about like AV and production. And Nicole's laughing because I said back end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm excited to do all that and get experience so that hopefully I can be more helpful <laughs> to this show <laughs> with the AV. Thank you, Mags, for being our producer. Yeah. Oh, tonight so doesn't want to happen, but we made it happen. We There's did. a reason why this is a soft launch, because uh, we're all big softies. Uh, no, that's not it. <laughs> not at all. No, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, they, Origins, okay. So, so Stephanie's doing her thing at Origins. Wait, Nicole, yeah. are you, you're going to Origins? No, I'm going Just to man. Australia. Okay. <laughs> I am going to try and seek out as many board game cafes in Australia as I can, though. Um, because take out? Take out as many? Like, what does that mean? There was, like, check out. Check, oh, okay. Check, <laughs> check. <laughs> Check one, two. <laughs> check. Like uh, take out. Like, oh. uh, it's how we say it in Australia. Uh, no, because uh, the board game scene obviously has gotten really big just in general outside of Europe. I think in the last couple of years, um, and it really wasn't a big thing. Like RPGs, yes, in Australia, but there's been. I think there was a Gen Con Australia. Uh, there's the PAX Australia, and so uh, board games are definitely becoming 
bigger there. And so I just want to see if I can check out board game cafes and see if there have been, in my absence of many years, any great game stores that have popped up. So that's going to be my event for the summer. <laughs> that's awesome. What's Afro what Origins? Gen Kent. Dice Tower? Dice Tower. Oh. But am I the only oh. one going to Dice Tower? I think, yeah, you're literally the only one. Dice Tower Con? <laughs> Just the Dice Tower Solo Con. Woo. I could just play a lot of Castellian and a lot of Friday. <laughs> and then just like go to Disney, like it's whatever. Rock, you rock climbing like on an actual like tower or castle. It's just you just climbing, <laughs> and we follow your progress. That's yeah, I could, I could periscope it. Totally periscope it. <laughs> yeah, with one um, hand. Yeah. <laughs> That seems safe. That's definitely safe. Yeah. Can I just can can I just because this is a safe place, right? This is this is it. a very safe so, place. So like I I really enjoy just like in my office, like my job's gotten really big, and then like these conventions get really big. I like the small gatherings, and so I really like Dice Tower because it's a little bit smaller than some of the big big cons, and like it still feels vaguely intimate, and like you can get some breathing time with people, but it's in. Flippin' Orlando in <laughs> July. No, ma'am. And I mean, I am so excited to see some of the people that are going there, and I know I'm going to get to play tons of awesome games, and I'm really excited for all that. But Flipping Orlando no, in July. I, anyway, no. enough said yeah. about that. That's too much. Too much. <laughs> too much, yeah. <laughs> um, so... After that is Gen Cant. That's right. Gen That's Con doesn't exactly. exist. It's just Gen Cant, yeah. It's just Gen Cant. You guys Except are going to be somewhere. Who knows? You'll be somewhere. But who's this going to be on the internet? All right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be at Gen Con. All of you are going to the alternative, right? Ooh, that's right. the alternative, Gen Con? Yeah. For those of, for those of you who just can't. Can't, Wait, can't. Nicole, Nicole, are you going to Gen Con? No. Oh, oh I okay. thought you were. Okay. No. I was gonna, I was about to get excited, real no. excited. I am not going to any con until BGG Con. I'm yeah, you've got that it. big Australia trip coming up. Yeah, that kind of eats up my almost entire vacation <laughs> allotment. Yeah, so. <laughs> when is PAX Australia? Uh, oh, I should know that off the top of my head. But yeah, what are you even? You're not fun. an, you're not an Aussie. You're not, a Canadian. No. You don't until even know they, Until they have PAX Toronto, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you mean you mean PAX basically in the U.S.? <laughs> PAX Great Lakes, what up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they need to bring that shit to Canada. Come on, like. They do. PAX what? Canada. There's different laws. There's no pa PAX. probably isn't allowed there somehow. Like, uh, yeah. no pennies. Yeah. No arcades. No, not there. <laughs> no. Well, there's, de there's definitely no pennies. Like we got rid of pennies. They're you going. did. You got rid yeah. of pennies. That's why packs can't be there. Pennies. Pennies are out. See you later, pennies. <laughs> That's why they can't be Although, there. Although, if they did a Pax Canada, I might be able to find a way to get to Canada. Like uh -huh. literally. Excellent. I just want <laughs> to visit Nicole. Like, just make a con for me, please, yeah. people. Yeah. I know it would be like so much easier if I lived in Vancouver to just like jaunt down to Seattle and chill, but... Oh, that sounds like a great idea. You should get right on that. I should. I should definitely get right on that. Any museums hiring in Vancouver, just let me know. <laughs> uh, I'd be down for that. So, <laughs> a lot closer to get to Australia as well. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. So, uh, what all is going to happen for Gen Camp this year, Suze? Yeah. Well, Give that's us a good question. question. <laughs> Give us, tell us one Secret thing <gasps> that nobody else knows. Hashtag secrets on the rocks. No, I can't. It's secret. <laughs> just one tiny <laughs> secret, Suze. One secret. Just a little baby. Like, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm working on something related to one of my favorite games, and we might try for, like, a world record <gasps> thing. Playing a thing That's with a exciting. thing. I on, have like on the thing. 
five options in my head right now. <laughs> well, there you go. So you'll it's see. Gonna, it's it's going to loop and chewy. This is why she's been stockpiling loop and chewy. I just know it. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. This is, is it. That why you, is that why you have ten copies of Runebound, Suze? That's a really weird <laughs> world record. I feel so passionate about it. It just seems like the perfect kind of game to play over the internet, don't you think? <laughs> the, 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 oh, the play over the internet. Is it going to oh. be played over the internet? Oh, sh <laughs> darn you and your journalistic needling. You're just oh, I can't. I can't drink in front of you. You're just Not you're so giant, wet. giant internet. One of the <laughs> favorite know. games, world record. Is Guinness going to be there? Like, is that going to be recorded? The beer? You have no. to drink a beer while this is happening no. to you? Jeez. <laughs> Intense. Wow. <laughs> I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I wish I... Every year, and how do you do this to me? Every year, I'm like, I wish I wasn't going to Gen Con. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I got to say that you're, there's no lines. You're not, like, there's no mad crush. You can have whatever you want to eat. You get to sleep in a super comfy bed every night. The commute's good. I don't know. It's got a lot going for it. Dogs are allowed. I'm totally yeah, pro. Dogs and cats totally and ferrets and yes. sloths and whatever you have. It's all allowed. Oh, my God. Okay, so drink on the so, floor. It has sloths. Like breaking news: topic. Jen can't has sloths. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> breaking Friday, news. Jen can. It, it sounds like if we were just to translate that, it sounds like you're saying some person named Jennifer who has a nickname yeah. of Jen is not allowed to possess sloths. No. Jen yep. can't have. <laughs> Yeah. The, only, the only person that's allowed is Kristen Bell. If you've ever seen her, oh really my gosh, just, oh yeah, yeah, super cute. Um, don't control. don't leave this stream right now to go look that up on YouTube. No, but don't do but sure. afterwards sure. afterwards go check that out. Um, what's after Gen Con? Uh, Spiel. Spiel and then BGCon. Yeah, and what's like Spiel's not a big deal, so we'll just <laughs> so go that one. Whatever. It's totally like whatever the biggest it's, in the world. You know what? It's, Wait, that's so powerful in that the name of the convention is just game. Like, right? Let's try to talk. Play. Just play. Is talk at the Mesa? Oh, like, is it play? Is it spiel play? Spiel. Or game? I thought it was game. Is it play? Uh, spiel is to play. It's game, game day at Essen, basically. Auf, auf yeah. Deutsch. Auf Deutsch. What's game? What's game? Wait a minute. Where does, where does Spiel, spiel Expo fit? Spiele is to play. Spiel is gay. Oh, okay. Yeah, See, that's... there you go. Well, little so German you know, lesson right there. Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> We're learning things yeah. from the show. Wait, we have to go back to Gen Con real quick because I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do a oh, thing. Oh yeah, like there's a thing. Wait, we have to go back to August. Okay, okay. Be sorry. you're gonna be there, sure. <laughs> We're going a little bit because I'm going to Gen Con. Woo! Yeah, we are. <laughs> So uh, I went to Gen Con my first time in 2014, and then I went to Gen Cant last year. And this year, my tax refund was enough where I'm going to Gen Con. Yay! Because so, we... Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that, like, 2014 Gen Con, I didn't really know that many people, and I didn't know how to do conventions yet, so I actually had a really miserable Aww. time. So how do my con? goal this year is to have a blast, a blast and a half. Yes. So anyone watching the amazing people, if you are going to Gen Con, I do want to see people. So I just wanted to like a quick, a quick mo note in there. Nice. So so go up to MaggieBot and say hello, MaggieBot. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then say, Mags, where are the two diamonds that you permanently stole? from Stephanie's Mafia de Cuba game at oh. CGG. Oh, my God. Speaking of amazing con games, how that did should we be, that up? Come on. That should Mafia be the Cuba second. An excellent game for a con, as long as you don't mind having to buy a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so because there, there, there be permanent thieves about with purple hair. It was blue at the time. Yeah, the way the camera looks, I don't know where I'm at. It's not me. <laughs> I think it's funny. At Max, this is Max. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay. So, awesome. so, Gen Con, yeah. Do play or don't play, depending on your perspective, Mafia de Cuba with Eric Lang, because I got to play <laughs> Mafia de Cuba with Eric Lang. He is. I mean, for everybody who's met him, he's a really sweet guy, but he's such a bad liar. He's, he's ruthless, I think. Is well, what he was just a bad liar. <laughs> he 
he's like he couldn't remember how like what he had taken. It was it was not. Oh, he couldn't remember what he'd taken. Oh, do you think was he working it? Zen oh. Zen tried to pull that right during that game. Zen tried to pull that. Uh, yeah. You you yeah. were like, what did you take out of the box? And he was like, diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do we do with that info? Yeah, yeah. Um, so Spiel, I really wish that I could go to Spiel. Yeah, Is anyone like too. active? Are you actively trying to go to Spiel? Anyone? Not this, this year. Not this year. Is it still involved? Like a oh, fourteen-hour yeah. plane ride? Then no. <laughs> Whatever. Is it, is it a 14 hour plane ride with some analysis paralysis? Hey, oh, oh, right cheers there. to that, sister. <laughs> mm. um, Good point. I, I would love to go, and uh, uh, it was like 2012, Adam went, uh, and I could have gone, but I just I couldn't afford to take the time off work. Um, I would really like to go some year, though. Like, I, I love. I love Germany, so it would be amazing. I uh, think Europe is trolling us, and it's like, it's not a thing, right? It's not really a thing. And they're just like, this spiel is so good. Yeah. And it's, it's not really a thing. It's just like uh, like a hot yeah. dog uh, vendor. And I think he made, I think he made of... a currywurst. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's, a few it's, tables. Kind of, it's not as good as, like, a con to go and play games. Like, that's not what it was about. Like, yeah. it it's feels just... more like a trade show than anything yeah. else, and if you don't have, like, express purpose of what you want to do in a given day... Buy every game. Well, I mean, if you want to buy every game, you can buy every game. You you filter in, and it's so beautiful in German, and you don't get lost at all. You can see where you are in all the halls, and, <laughs> like, for me not to get lost in a space is, like, amazing. It's an amazing <laughs> thing. Because I get lost everywhere. But <laughs> one thing I will say about Essen that everyone wants to go to Essen, everyone wants to go to Essen, but it is just a big trade show. Yeah. If, if you have a decent mule, it's you can have a better experience without the $4,000 plane ticket. Yes. Like, if yeah. you can just get someone to bring you those games. Yeah. Or, so, you know. Andrew asks, <laughs> uh, uh, Andrew Christopher Enriquez says, Nicole, are there any good vegan places in Germany? Oh, That's actually yeah. a really good, you should do a good all the cool vegan places to eat at all the convention locations. I should, I should. I found, well, I mean, fun. Ace actually helped me quite a bit at BGGCon with that. Um, we did, well, I mean, we did some grocery shopping, but um, Ace also took me to a delicious cinnamon bun place. Uh, in Dallas, Fort Worth, and we also tried Spiral Diner. Um, as far as other cons go, uh, I don't know, because the only other one I've been to is The Gathering. Uh, Niagara Falls has some very nice Indian restaurants, I can tell you that very much. <laughs> but uh, I would love to travel the world and find out all the delicious vegan places to eat and go to conventions. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put this on Kickstarter right now. Be right back. <laughs> be, be, be. Nicole's gone. Cool. Yeah, so yeah, it, it, the, if the four of us were playing a game right now, what would you want it to be and go, Suze? I would want it to be Happy Salmon. <laughs> no. <laughs> Me no. Uh, oh, no, no. You guys, that was the wrong answer. We, it, I, I, it was the wrong answer. I take my answer back. I have a much better no, answer. This, this is not a right or wrong. Like this is supposed to be your opinion, but Max was like, nope. No, it, you guys, you guys, no. I take, I take no happy salmon. We have okay. to play looping chewy. Yes, but there's four, there's four of us. us. Looping chewy is three. three. You mean looping Louie? Yes, yeah. four. Looping Louie. Yeah. That that Lupin one. Louie is four. Yeah. Okay. Or, never forget the like blind. Blindfolded Loop and Chewy of Extra Life last year. I yeah. love yeah. watching you guys do that. It's a good games. variant. It's a good variant. You, yeah, teams. When you have I, six people and you want to play Loop and Chewy, that's what you do. Yeah. Uh, Nicole, what game? Four player. Bruce. Four bang, of us, right? Bang, bang, bang. Bruce. Did Bruce, you say? Bruce. Did you just say Bruce? Oh yeah. Did we yeah. just become best friends right now? <laughs> <laughs> It's like it is one of my favorite felds. I I I lean towards the lighter end of felds, so like Castles of Burgundy and Bruges and uh, uh, Notre Dame. Really no, no, in the year of the dragon. Punt. Oh. Get out of here. 
Get out of here. And I, I, and I, Max, I, I, Max, is, Max is like, I would love to play that right now. <laughs> no, I, I do. I really want to try Luna again because of Max. Yes. Max video. loves Luna. Max yeah. loves. In fact, Wow, you literally have that right next to you. Wait, wait for it. Did wait she for just it. get up from her desk? Like, did she just like... She the just felt shelf is right next to my computer. The felt shelf. The felt shelf, you guys. Yeah. Stephanie, come up with a pun. Come up with a pun. I'm um, with a pun. <laughs> so Mags just did a really cool uh, video for Luna. If you want to yeah. check that out, that's on meeplesincluded.com. <laughs> Luna is, I think, Mags, one of your favorite felts. It is my favorite four-player felt. Favorite, <laughs> favorite four-player felt. Okay. Girl, <laughs> Jason, player. you have to have standards, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, sure. it's, uh, you know that Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like Mags has like. Maslow's hierarchy of felts. <laughs> so it's like, you know, solo up here. It's not really necessary. And then two player, like pretty good, you know. And then it comes down here, it's like three player, yeah. Four player, it's like just right here. <laughs> Luna! It's the base of this pyramid, girl. That's right. It. There's Luna down here. There's Trajan up here. Those are my favorites. Yeah. Everything else is good. I like a lot of felt, but those so are my favorites. So what's what if we could play a four player game right now, Mags, what would it be? Tricky, but probably small city. I need a second game. Oh. I've I, not I, played I, that. Okay. I don't know anything about I'll it. play. Alban I'll VR it. game. I so do, do, have you guys played Alban VR games like Clinique or Town Center? No. Negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta you gotta get this in your life. They're amazing. They're, They're so really good. They're weird and cool and spatially hard to deal with and just different. I haven't played Clinique, and I'm I like I I'm so close to pulling the trigger on ordering it. I just I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be able to hold out. Okay, um, so for people watching, Susan and I live like 40 minutes away from each other. <laughs> less if there's no traffic. Like, no, yeah. Less no if there's joke, no traffic. We so rarely get to see each other. I have Clinique and two expansions. <laughs> are, are you trying to make me cry? Yeah. Is that what you're trying? Like you want me to cry on air? Is that what you're doing? No, I know. I really want to play it. It just the more the more small city I play, the more I want to play Clinique. Um, right. And tramways, like you backed tramways, right? Insta back. Like yeah. the second I saw Elvin, like put it on Twitter. Yeah, I couldn't mm. hit it fast enough. Do you have the small city expansions? I don't. I was considering it. I don't play a lot of expansions in general. I play yeah. like I like really good base games, so mm -hmm. I get really frustrated when they need something else. But there's like a Godzilla, if I'm not mistaken. I kind of want that. There are. There are. You get lot. Yeah. Um. So I'll tell you what. You let's get together for an Auburn day, and you bring Clinique, and I'll bring all the small city expansions, and we can go to town. I really like that idea. That'd be fun. I think okay. you mean go to small city. <laughs> Go to town center. <laughs> yeah. So I'm in for the four-player small city. Okay. Wait. So Nicole picked Bruges. Yeah. Mags picked small city. I picked Looping Chewy, Looping Louie, some kind of amalgam of looping creatures. So Steph. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I have been trying to think this entire time. You asked and I'm like, question. I don't know. I know, but because I didn't know. You to tell me. Also, the one took Bruges, so she has nothing. She doesn't. Oh, I know. It's like, well, Bruges is out. Um, I'm trying to. Look. Ooh, this would be a good one. Um, I would like to play Star Wars Rebellion. Ooh, oh, really? With the four of you. That took a turn. I could do that. I could oh, get I expected. If not, if not that, we'll go. We'll go light space for roll for the galaxy. Oh, oh, I like that. I like that would that. be good. For the galaxy. That would be good with you guys because I feel like I could mind meld with Nicole and be like, do the actions I want <laughs> you to do on Roll for the Galaxy. So develop so I don't have to. <laughs> what about my mind block? <gasps> How dare you? That. Shut that right down. Oh, man. Like you have to put the cups on your head. How do you mind block? Yeah. You just do. It's like, I'm surprised like, you don't. Tinfoil hat or. <laughs> Just I mean, kind of here. Um, Ace said Waffle Bonanza, which I can't believe that Stephanie oh. Ace that's just like one up to our Yeah, that's 
Like, I'm fired, so. We're yeah. all fired. It's now Terrible. Ace's show. Well, yeah, see, I... Ace listen, is I, I, <laughs> Yeah, Ace is a true Werfel prophet, and I appreciate that. Um, I have created many Werfel disciples, and I you feel really like have. I'm on, like, I'm on, like, a Werfel sabbatical. Okay. Yeah? Oh, well, just, you did your good deeds. It's time to... No, I, 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 I brought two new people, the word of the bone... At, uh, at Geekway, <laughs> and and gave them actually copies of the game because they loved it so much. Oh bless! Yeah, so I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to bring copies of Warful Bonanza to every convention that I go to, so that I can teach people the game and give a copy to those that really really love it. I owe Nicole a copy. Suze already has a copy. Two has multiple a copies. Backup copy. Oh. And Max, do you have a copy of Warful Bonanza? No, I played it with you at that Plaid Hut party. Do you remember? Uh huh. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> do you remember? remember that Plaid Hut party? I was not. I was not PAG <laughs> Kyle. Okay. <laughs> That's an that inside was, joke. I mean, it was Plaid Hut on the rocks. Let's face that it. That was for sure. But <laughs> I was not. I remember, I arrived. I arrived super late, so I was. Yeah, that's just, like the sober one. <laughs> right, like I was pretty sober. We played with um, Emerson, and it was really fun. And Donnie, we yeah. played with Donnie, and Donnie loved it so much that he actually purchased it as soon as he got back home. Nice. So wow. I, I did my bone prophecy, like <laughs> did it. Well, that's what happened with me uh, at the end of the evening at the gathering. Uh, one night, uh, Adam and I needed to just find like a 10, 15 minute game uh, while we needed to play something else. And I ended up teaching him Waffle Bonanza, and we played just the two of us. And he secretly bought it for us because he had so much fun. Um, I do think that like the more plays you add to it, it's really tough. Like it, it gets longer and like. Tougher to get your With goals Warfel? and stuff. See, I feel yeah. like you, you could complete more recipes the more that people are playing, though. That's true. That's true. Let me Werfel, like, let me take you under my Werfel wing, and I will show you the way. <laughs> I sincerely thought you said Werfel wang. Uh, yeah. There's room. I'll take you under that, too. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so... Because Warful's harder to get, so it made me think about like games that we want to get. And we talked about conventions that we're going to. Mm -hmm. So talk to me a little bit about what game or games you're really looking forward to coming out of some of the cons coming up, whether it's like Origins or I, I know there's not a lot of releases at Origins, but you know Origins or Gen Con releases. What are you looking forward to? Um, for me, there's Ooh. there's Star Trek Frontiers, which is like the Star Trek version of Mage Knight. Oh yeah, it's happening. And then um, Oracle of Delphi what? is coming out late, late this year, which I'm super, super psyched about. I have one game I'm so excited about. Yokohama. It's yeah. Not, it's not coming out at Gen Con. No, I want it so bad. But it will Seth? be on Kickstarter June 21st. Yeah, Seth, Seth, bring me a copy at Gen Con or fight me. Um... <laughs> Yokohama is coming out on Kickstarter June 21st. There's going to be a deluxe version with upgraded bits and coins. And I am not one of those, like, got to have this game on Kickstarter um, now that I don't do, like, the crowdfunding edition on OBG. Uh, so I don't feel as obligated to buy stuff on Kickstarter. But I want this game, like, immediately. So it will make me feel good to just, like, have it purchased uh, on the Kickstarter and also the deluxe version. So... I'm super pumped, and I'm actually going to be doing a video, a review video for that. My first review video ever. Oh, my gosh. That's so exciting. I know. It's so adorable. It's like <laughs> I'm like your, I'm your child, and you're watching me walk for the first time because you guys are pros. <laughs> yeah. Pros. <laughs> Professionals. I'm right, laughing. just laughing at the idea of us being professional. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> Someone said that actually on Nerd Nighters the other night. They're like so professional, and I was like, "Dude, I'd tweet while we're recording. What are you talking about?" <laughs> I laughed so <laughs> hard at that tweet. Show. It's in the show. I mean, I don't tweet. No <laughs> tweeting. Lol. Yeah. Okay. So, what about you, Nicole? 
I honestly, um, I don't keep an eye on what's coming up at say Gen Con and Essen until it's much much closer to it. Um, unless something's like super hyped and in pre-order, like Seafall, like right now is just like ah, pre-order. It's amazing. Rah. Um, I am excited to try the Long Night, um, the expansion for Dead of Winter. Um, after having seen some of the uh, the characters from that, um, I'd like to I'd like to see that. But honestly, I like having Gen Con and S and B uh, like seeing what people are saying about games and then finding out what cool stuff is coming out of those cons. Like that's that's cool for me to be able to see that. That's awesome. That's cool. What about you, Sus? Yeah, Sus. Uh well is Mystic Fail coming out in Origins? It's coming out like I know that the review copies go out June like early June, so I think they're doing like the Origins release. Okay. So I'm super excited for Mystic Veil, vale, because I just appreciate that it's innovative and different, and, and so I'm looking... But the game I'm actually really, really excited for is Guilds of London. Ooh, yeah. Um, All right, are we just, one? like, TMG, really? Could we yeah, just... <laughs> we're, we're basically... We're sponsored by... Hi, we're sponsored by TMG. If you're interested in Tasty Minstrel Games, go to tastyminstrel.com <laughs> for all your gaming needs. <laughs> well, it's Lance now. you got to butter him up. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> someone, oh, you know what? Someone asked, um, like, we were at Geekway and uh, Tasty Minstrel was there, and someone was uh, asking Michael Mendez, they said, What kind of games does Tasty Minstrel do, do? And someone answered, not Michael, but someone else, I think, said, um, We call them procedural <laughs> strategy games. And I was like, <laughs> First of all, that weirdly fits. I think. Aquas your fist. Second of all, yeah, what is that? What is that? Like, I don't know. But yeah, so Taste of Menstrual, creator of procedural strategy games. Steph so are they, or deny. are they going to put out like a CSI game? Or right? What? I know. I just, I just thought of like scalpels is immediately what came to my mind. And I was like, what? But no, I think just the like procedure, like that type of strategy, like doing this, doing that, you've got to do this this way type of stuff, which that yeah. makes sense. It totally makes sense. Yeah. It sounds okay. super weird, but it makes sense. Well, Fields of London, though, yes, Suze. I don't know anything about that. I'm very excited to know about it from Seuss, just the name, though. T tell us about Fields of London. I well, I don't, I I don't remember much, but it's Alex Fister, <gasps> right? Oh. oh, see, I got your attention so there, like, right? You're like, that's all we need to know. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Make it rain. <laughs> cool. I should be in marketing. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's like a heavier should be euro from them, and not a heavier euro. It's it's a procedural strategic game. It's a procedural strategic game. <laughs> Everyone start using that immediately. Oh, um, but it has some of his trademarks. Oh, like, oh like, snap! It's not Fister. It is Tony Boy Dowell. What? Yeah, I thought it was Alex Fister. Antonia. Wait, what's the Alex Fister one coming out then? Snaps. Oh gosh! Oh, now I'm. Is it both? Oh. Make it unrain. Make it unrain. unrain. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I love Tony Boydell, though, because Tony, Tony Boydell shows up in those weirdest right threats now. on the internet. He shows what? Up when what? you're talking about random games, and he'll just be like, oh, I helped develop that. Like, oh. <laughs> like, out of nowhere. All so right. <laughs> oh, well, now hey. I can't remember. Okay, well, I'm. I, Fund is still my choice. Yeah, the, the, the caveat is that we're. We have some of this, so we don't. This is not an accurate. It's not an accurate show. Well, yeah. only only slightly important because the Seth is in the chat. Yeah. Seth, um, get out of here so we can oh, lie. I don't think Seth works for TMG or anything, yeah. so you know. TMG is coming out with a lot of hot stuff, though. TMG and Stronghold are like on point. Oh, Bear Valley. Oh, how did I forget about Bear Valley? Oh my God, yeah. I got to play Bear Valley. Yeah. Oh, you on did. Point. Oh. I got to on play. Point. I basically What's the, like bulldoze Steven into showing me how to play because he was really that's tired and he wanted to go home. That's my life. Bulldozing <laughs> Steven <laughs> into getting what I want in my life. No, it's kidding. like a press your luck type of like chaotic Cartagena, right? So you're trying to get from one side of the board to the other and you keep pointing at parts of the board that you're going to put another card down. But if you have too many, if you've done that too many times, you, you can kind of uh, you can crap out. Um... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Got> Nicole's <laughs> attention. 
Well, like if you if you if you're above six cards and you find a bear, you die. So you have to be really careful. And then uh, so kind of bears. Bears. I live in Canada, people. Like, let's not talk about bears. <laughs> Ponzi, isn't that Ponzi scheme-ish? Like where like you're kind of taking a chance oh. on if that comes out. Not quite. So it. it it's more, and it, there's a game like it, and I can't figure out what it is, and it's driving me nuts. But it, the closest I can, I can like maybe it to, Seth will tell us. It it's very similar to the style of game of Cartagena, if you ever played that. Mm. It's like a race across the board. And then <laughs> what I glad. liked about it is that it's Carl Chittick that you really want to play at the high player count. You want to play it like um. six player. Uh. So, uh, Stephen Glenn says Bear Valley, B-A-R-E. No, no, bears, like care about bears. <laughs> Sounds procedural. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. No, no, this is Stronghold, so it's not procedural, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, no, they, yeah, they do not do procedural, come on. Diamonds, I, um, not procedural. No, I, I, they had a copy at the gathering, and I just didn't get a chance to play it, unfortunately. Uh, I wish I had. So, um, any any closing? I guess we're gonna kind of wrap it up. Um, yeah. We start we started a little bit late, but any any closing thing that you guys want to say? Uh, I guess. Um, so, for those of you who are here now and weren't here at the beginning, this is going to be a cast that we're doing. Uh, we're pretty much thinking every two weeks on Friday evenings. And um, it's going to be hosted through MeeplesIncluded.com, which is the new website that most of us are they're working on. Um, we're trying to rope in Nicole any way we can, even though she's got a very popular site already. Um, so you should go very to MeeplesIncluded.com. <laughs> And MeeplesIncluded.com is a website and community that we are uh, creating and created. Um, just talking about tabletop games with the mindfulness of diversity and inclusivity. And um, this show, Games on the Rocks, is basically going to be us, maybe some guests will take suggestions, but more importantly, we want to hang out with each other, and we want to hang out with you guys and chat with you, so um, definitely join us. Um, we'll have a more stable schedule, but right now we're thinking about every other Friday, as Mag said, at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. But we might change that. Um, we this is kind of our soft open, so we weren't really trying to hard advertise for that. So thanks everyone for joining. There's Yay. actually a ton of people that joined, and you were all amazing and awesome. Um, but yeah, we'll advertise that and have a more consistent schedule once we kind of get our um, streaming legs underneath us. And we might switch to Twitch. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it does. Um, <laughs> just because there's kind of some versatility with that. So, um, but let us know how you feel about that. If um, that's not something that you would care for, then um, at us at Meeples Included and say, hey, I really like you on YouTube. Stay on YouTube. Because we have the possibility that we could do both, but it would be a split chat. So, um, we'll, we're definitely open to trying some things out, though. So, um, more importantly, we want to hang out, have fun, and interact with you. So, And share drink recipes. And uh, one last cheers from the group. <laughs> For my, like, third different yeah. glass that I have. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sure. Max, Max has had, like, she has them lined up. Like, <laughs> I have so. a coffee as well. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, so our, our drink of the evening, if you didn't join us earlier, is the analysis par paralysis. That's <laughs> two ounces each of vodka, Kahlua, tonic water. Let it sit for an hour until the ice melts, and then it's perfect. Yeah. So cheers. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, everybody. Thank cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye. This is the spot where we'll have an outro.